What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one will break down what's going on with SPY, NVIDIA, Tesla, the QQQ, and just a couple of tickers. I'm also going to break down what's very likely to happen tomorrow to the markets based off the data that's coming out. I'm going to try to make this video very brief. Before I break anything down about all this information, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks and the offer ends in just seven days. So check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Anyways, when it comes to SPY, we had a very, very interesting day. Basically, we gapped up in the morning, going to almost 460 a share. And I warned everyone that 460 is going to be a very critical level for SPY. And whatever happened from there would affect the whole market. So anyways, going back to it, I warned you that if we tried to turn bullish, if we wanted to be bullish on the market for today, we had to break and hold above 460. And if we did so, we could see 462. But I warned you, resistance is going to be very, very heavy at 460. And we came close to it, but we ended up projecting after forming this bearish divergence, and the odds started to favor this downside. Then I warned you guys that if, simultaneously, I said this in the morning video, if we broke this critical level right over here, right, if we broke below this, like, area that's very close to where this gap is, this gap support around this like 457.75 area, it's very likely we're going to see this thing end up breaking below the 200 EMA, coming all the way down to fill this gap from the pre-market to around the 455s, right? We were warned about this in the morning and we had to watch for confirmation. So what ended up happening was we broke below the 20 EMA, we turned bearish after those signals came out and the market continued to downtrend. It got a rejection off this 50 EMA after that. And then we started to test the 200 EMA. Then finally, we ended up breaking below and that was a very bearish signal. I recorded my second video around this time right here when we started selling off. And I warned you, we we're looking really bearish. I warned you guys about the drop, but I was thinking that around 455, we could see some uh, buyers try to come in and try to defend this. We saw a little bit right over here, but the market continued to get this massive sell off. And it ended up going all the way down to like 451. So that kind of like hints in dire the direction that the market makers are going to be eyeing Max Payne for tomorrow. And it's going to be very important to watch for. So what is Max Payne? Just as a reminder, Max Payne for tomorrow is 449. And we have a 2.25 put to call ratio. I also want to add that we have about just under 500,000 of those calls expiring. But we have a little bit over 1.1 million puts expiring. So the majority of positions are going to be on the put side. And it's very likely the market makers are going to be watching this 449 area. We're going to likely test this tomorrow. It's very hard to predict exactly how it's going to happen if we just like sell off and then try to bounce near it and then end up selling off near it. Or if we like gap up and sell off, those are both very possible. But I do believe this area is going to be tested. What I can tell you, however, is what's very, very likely to happen nonetheless, based off the data that's coming out. So to start us off, we have some earnings coming out. We have Ford, Intel, and Roku. They're still coming out at the time I'm recording this. Uh, it, they're not going to be as impactful for the whole market. So I will talk more about these tomorrow as we're still waiting for the guidance calls. Uh, they will affect the market a little bit for Friday, but the bigger thing affecting the way we open is not going to be earnings, but the PCE data that's coming out. This is like CPI, except it's inflation from the Fed side. The Fed is going to be looking at this data very carefully. And when PCE comes out, it's going to be impactful, but, but not like extremely impactful, not as impactful as like FOMC or CPI, because this is some outdated data. This data is going to be for the month of June, and we're actually getting close to August right now. So this is actually kind of late. So it could affect the market to some degree it should have somewhat of an effect uh it could cause the market to pop a bit because we know that you know cpi was pretty decent and pc is likely going to be quite good too uh meeting expectations so i'm not too worried about this and then 30 minutes after the market opens we have the michigan inflationary expectations report and all this other data my best prediction would be that this data could help the market gap up a little bit. We might see the market try to bounce in the morning. I think it's very likely that's going to happen, but then the selling pressure will perpetuate and eventually those market makers are going to try to bring us closer to max pain. That's what my best prediction is going to be. So here's how I think it's going to play out. Now, I don't know for sure, guys, like these videos, like during this time is harder to predict, but my best prediction would be a bounce in the morning. We're going to see this thing maybe retest 454 to 455, something like that. And PC is going to help the market bounce alongside earnings because so far earnings have been quite positive, a lot better than bad, if anything. And we might see the market gap up and just bounce in the morning, then get a rejection near this mid 450 area, so like 454, 455. And then we might get another sell off all the way down to like 450 to 449, which is where our max pain happens to be. 
and we might see the market hover around that area and maybe close a little bit more red one more time before getting a nice bounce by like Monday by next week as we approach Apple's earnings. But for now, I am anticipating something very similar to what happened today, but not as like not as crazy, not as big of a drop. Hopefully a gap up tomorrow, maybe a little pop near open and then another sell off closer to max pain, which is what the market makers want. I think that's very likely. I'm going to go over the levels tomorrow specifically, more about how this is going to move going forward. And we have to watch them all very carefully. So just to be specific, uh, our next major support on SPY currently is like around this 450 area. And below that, we have 448. And resistance is going to be around this like 453.5 area. So just watch those carefully. For Tesla, it's also looking relatively weak. I just want to note that Tesla tested 255 and we did form almost a double bottom, maybe not perfectly. Uh, so right here, I think on the 30 minutes time frame, you can see this on Tesla basically forming a double bottom. We're going to be watching for Tesla to potentially gap up. I think Tesla's going to try to gap up going into tomorrow. Maybe open closer to like 260 or so and then reject off that and then start selling off again. The chart is looking weak, though, from a technical standpoint and just is not looking the best. Could this be like a head and shoulders? I'm not really counting on that, but I am going to be eyeing some, you know, critical levels below 250. But for now, I do think Tesla is going to follow SPY and the QQQ, maybe gap up. 260 then starts selling off as time goes on and i think there could be more selling pressure i want to give a shout out to neo because neo is holding up very nicely and i think that there is a possible head and shoulders forming yes yes neo could sell off this like imbalance down here it is a possibility but what i'm thinking is neo could gap up just like the market and starts selling off just a little bit i think it's due for a slight pullback we may have a red day for tomorrow but here's the thing I'm still very bullish for NEO for the month of August, at least during the first week, because they have deliveries coming out and it's very likely they're going to do very well. So this could be a very, very good opportunity for NEO as this thing is going to pump to some crazy high levels, in my opinion. For Apple stock, we have earnings next week. I'm going to be looking for a bounce next week, but for now it's looking relatively weak approaching it. I think it could bounce in the morning retest this like 194 area then reject off 194 and make its way back down to 192.5 if not as low as like 191.3 that's going to be our next level after that and if that fails us 190 could come on apple uh, i think we have an imbalance down here closer to this like 190 area so like right about here uh, there's a possibility that's going to be tested but i'm going to be watching for a gap up then another drop after that so that's going to be very important to note for the triple q i'm seeing something very similar one thing that's not good about this is even though it's looking kind of like oversold in a sense, uh, I do think it's going to try to balance for like 378 or so tomorrow morning, but then the chart is still not looking that good. Uh, we formed a bearish divergence that is starting to play out. And to add on to this, when you zoom out of the chart, we have this unfilled gap down here around this 373 area. That's going to be a very important level to watch for. I think the odds favor this thing getting a bounce in the morning, just like SPY, and then selling off intraday and making its way all the way down to at least 373 or lower than that i think nvidia may follow the crowd nvidia is looking relatively strong compared to the market got a very nice pump in the morning before slowing down however there's a good chance it may be dictated by the market at least to some degree and it could be forming kind of like a cup and handle maybe like the handle still gets to be formed uh and for that reason we might see nvidia kind of like do something similar pop to like the 460s 460 to 463 or so maybe a little bit higher maybe it tries to get closer to like 470 then it starts to sell off a little bit thanks to the market but it's not going to be as aggressive as what, what we saw today and the video tends to be a little bit late to selling off compared to the market so it may take a little bit longer but there's a good chance that could be happening now for microsoft we might see something very similar i'm going to be looking for a bounce in the morning at 333 retest this previous uh, resistance sorry, support, which is now going to become resistance. We're going to be watching for a retest of like 334 to 333. Then a bit of a sell-off after that, another retest of 330. And it could actually break a little bit lower to like 325 or so. That There's a possibility of that. Uh, we have 327 as a very important target, which is the previous low right here. So 327 to 325 could be some targets on it. Maybe we get a bounce first, and then it just starts selling off a little bit more thanks to the market. And then it could bounce a little bit later by next week. So I'm going to be watching those levels very carefully. For AMD, it's very similar. I'm going to be looking for a small bounce in the morning, maybe a retest of like 113, then another sell-off to about this 109 area, if not as low as 107. So it could be forming kind of like a head and shoulders right here and get down, maybe gap up, then come down. I'm going to be watching that carefully, so watch those levels. I also want to add that the dollar index is starting to break out more. I was talking about this yesterday, a possible breakout on the dollar could be a bearish signal for the markets and it's starting to 
to break out. Now, if it continues to do so, that's going to be bearish. It looks like it may cool off just a little bit, maybe retest our 20 or even 50 EMA, which means the market could get a bounce. And then if it bounces off one of these EMAs, it could continue going, and that would be bearish for the stock market. The VIX is also starting to break out finally. Finally, it's acting like normal. Uh, if this thing continues to establish these higher highs and higher lows, that could be our signal. Still waiting. We also have this imbalance that got filled, but there is a possibility it goes up to like 16. Uh, maybe it, it kind of comes down a little bit because of the market bouncing in the morning. And then we get a bounce off our 200 EMA or one of these EMAs and it starts you know pushing a little bit higher because of the market potentially cooling off again. For Google, I'm expecting something similar. Uh, Google may get a retest of about this like 131 area, but I don't think it's going to sell off like that hard as we had positive earnings and, you know, buyers are still stepping in. So we could be seeing a retest of like 131, then a rejection and this thing to come down to like 128 for tomorrow for a very flat day. Once again, same thing for Amazon. I mean, we might see Amazon get a retest of 129.44, then reject off that and make its way down, in my opinion, to potentially this 125 area. It could be forming like a head and shoulders right here. So it's just worth noting. It's looking a little weak to me. And we're going to watch these levels very carefully. Last but not least for Meta, I warned you guys about this 330 level. We could, this could be a make or break level. And we actually got a rejection off of it. And we have this imbalance down here now around this like 290, 297 area. You're going to be looking for a pop around this like 320 area, around the 320s, then get a rejection, come all the way down to around 305. Could it go down to 297? That's a possibility, but I'm going to be watching two, oh, two, uh, I'm sorry, 305 specifically. All right. So anyways, that's what I have for this video. I want to keep this one kind of short. Uh, I am anticipating the most likely possibility would be like a pop and drop, but I'm always open-minded to seeing what PCE looks like in the morning and what the pre-market tells us just to be more safe but for now that's what's very likely looking at the current charts they're still looking a little bit more bearish and don't forget that for tomorrow we got to be watching max Payne on spy it's a very very critical level all right guys so thank you for listening have a great day everyone market to the moon is long term is very bright despite this temporary sell-off that is going on which is completely healthy thank you and peace out